Hey, what's going on? Sir Blackson 97 here, back with another deck profile. Today we'll be profiling one of my favorite archetypes and decks of all time, Dragoonides. This is a fun deck that I've been playing since the Nintendo DS days of the 2010 World Championship Reverse of Arcadia game. I played it through a lot of Duel Links, through Master Duel, and finally returned back to the TCG. So it's a very iconic deck dating back all the way from the Hidden Arsenal days. So it doesn't need too much of an introduction, but to give you a quick rundown, it's a Wind, Wing Beast, and Dragon based deck focusing on equips, special summoning, synchro summoning, and obviously they have their own link as well. So a lot of field presence and going into big extra deck monsters. So without further ado, let's jump into our extra deck, starting with two copies of their link monster, Dragoonity Knight Romulus. Requires two dragon and or wing beast monsters that are not tokens. If it's link summon, you get to add a Dragoonity spell or trap or one dragon ravine from your deck to your hand. If a dragon monster is special summoned from the extra deck to a zone this card points to, you get to special summon a dragon or wing beast monster from your hand. It has no effects or its effects are negated and it cannot be used as link material. So it's a nice way to just continue furthering your plays and searching out some of their key spell and traps, as well as technically their field spell. Dragon Ravine's pretty generic, as a lot of dragon decks that just want to be in the graveyard will utilize it, but it does have a Dragoonity effect, so don't let the name fool you, it does have a nice place in the archetype. Moving on to the big boss monsters of our deck, we have two copies of Ascalon and two copies of Aridvar. Ascalon, feel free to bump up a few more copies if you need to, as it does have a really nice floating effect that does count as a synchro summon. So it's definitely handy and helpful in getting a lot of recovery plays or just continuing your plays for main phase two. And Aridvar is a nice little Omni negate. Well, just monster negate technically. So your ratios and quantities may vary, but I feel two of each is a pretty good starting point. We'll start with Ascalon. A lot of the newer age Dragoonities will not have as much restrictive summoning conditions and requirements as the old Dragoonities. So a lot of the newer ones just require a Dragoonity tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters. So pretty easy and helpful with the deck and kind of nice to splash into other decks. What's cool about Ascalon is its first effect is actually not once per turn, not even soft in any regard. You can use it as many times as you want. You get to banish a Dragoonity monster from the graveyard to target a monster your opponent controls and banish it. As long as your opponent has monsters and you have the materials in Graveyard to Banish, you can use that first effect as much as you want. The only restriction comes from the second effect, which if this Synchro Summon card is destroyed by your opponent's card, Battle or Card Effect, especially summon a Dragoonity Synchro Monster from your extra deck that has 3,000 or less attack, this is treated as a Synchro Summon. So super handy floating and sort of recovery effects, just being able to get into pretty much a lot of your other Synchro monsters, treat them as a Synchro Summon, and get their effects going off as well. Up next, we have Arid Bar. Like I mentioned, it negates monster effects, and as a quick effect as well. Pretty much similar to Ascalon, banish a Dragoonity monster from the graveyard to negate the monster effect activation, and if you do, banish that monster. So super helpful to really mess up your opponent, as now they're really pressed to recover those resources or try and replicate them. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, after damage calculation, you can banish it. And if the Synchro Summon card is destroyed by our opponent's card, battle or card effect, you get to pretty much become Harpy's Feather Duster and destroy all of their spell and traps. So instead of the floating condition, it's just more destruction and really punishing your opponent, whereas Ascalon lets you float into more offensive and utility options to continue your plays. Plus, you can just climb back into another Ascalon and continue that sort of climbing and banishing, but... Do keep watch that the floating condition for Ascalon is the hard ones per turn on his effect. Moving on to two copies of our level 8, Dragoonity Knight Barcha. So this is one of the older ones, so its requirements along with the older Dragoonities are a Dragon Tuner and a Non-Tuner Wing Beast Monster. It's a little bit more generic with the Tuner, but the Non-Tuner will be a Wing Beast, so it's a bit more restrictive. So you can't make use of the Non-Tuner Dragoonity Monsters that are Dragon type. Yeah, the... The main deck is very uniquely sort of organized and categorized, so it can give it a bit wild to sort of get into your synchro monsters, but if you just want to turbo out something like Ascalon and then blow it up and then flow into the other synchros, you can go about it that way as well, but the Wing Beasts do hold up on their own respective rights as well, so you can run those too. When Barcha is synchro summoned, you get to target any number of Dragoonity Dragon monsters in your graveyard, Equip them to Barcha. It gains 300 attack for each Dragoonity card equipped to it. 
What's super nice is a lot of the dragon monsters that you do want to recover, like the tuners and such, do have their own sort of special summoning condition from the spell and trap zone, or they have super nice bonus effects they can give to your synchro. So this is definitely a nice little old edition of our boss monsters, but nowadays grabbing stuff like Chaos and Phalanx will just let you special summon them and then go into Link and Synchro plays from there as well, including Barcha. So it's more of just become a play extender, but it does have a nice place if you're able to load it up with a lot of equips. You can make use of its beatdown focus strategies. Moving on to their, one of their level 7s, the one we're using is Dragoonie Knight's Gorm Fabar. Okay, some of these names are... Uh, just look at the others. It, it, some of these names are just ridiculously complex. I, I'm sure if I study enough ancient philosophy and ancient languages, I can figure it out. But for right now, this is the level 7 G. Pretty much it's the newer one, so you just need the Dragoonity Tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters. When it is Synchro Summon, target Dragoonity Tuner in the graveyard and equip it to it. Quick effects, send an equip card you control that is equipped to this card to the graveyard to target and banish up to two cards in your opponent's graveyard. So it's almost like its own little DD Crow effect. Flown to Ascalon into this guy, immediately grab that tuner or that equip card and then throw it away just so you can disrupt more of your opponent's graveyard. So it's super helpful that way. We'll move on to their level sixes, which just round out the rest of the extra deck. We have two copies of Vaharania. Probably butchered that one. Gadurg, Gabolg. See, those ones are fine. Those ones are easy to pronounce. Androgyny Knight Luin, which is also a synchro tuner. Really handy. We'll start with Vaharania because similar to Barcha, this one is kind of like the older school boss monster for the deck, but now becomes its own little sort of play extender. It's one of the older ones along with Godurg and Gobolg, so they require the Dragon Tuner and the one or more non-tuner Wing Beasts. Vaharania, when it's synchro summoned, you get to target a level 3 or lower Dragon Dragoony monster in the graveyard. Equip it to Vaha Reina. Once per turn, you get to send an equip card. Equip to this card to the graveyard. Double this card's attack until the end of the turn. Notice how it says current attack and not original. So if you load up with stuff like Axe of Despair or even Lewin has a nice little boosting effect, you can really pump this card up to some pretty ridiculously high attack values and really just turn your opponent's monsters or just into Swiss cheese or go for the direct attack. Goddurg is super helpful. Once per turn, add a level 4 lower dragon or wing beast monster from deck to hand. Pretty generic. And all you got to do afterwards is discard a dragon or wing beast monster. So if you have no cards in your hand, whatever you're adding is pretty much getting discarded. But it's super helpful as this card, or this deck, excuse me, has a lot of graveyard recovery and focus strategy. So it's never really the end of the world. The only really restriction here is that the one you're adding from deck to hand is level 4 or lower, but the one you can discard does not have to be level 4 or lower. Plus what's nice is a lot of, there are a couple high, really high level main deck Dragoonie monsters that can special summon from the graveyard that don't banish themselves when they leave the field. So you could honestly just search out another Dragoonity with God Dirk, discard something like Armagram, and then immediately revive Armagram or summon it from the graveyard, so... There's a lot of stuff that even has its own special summoning condition from the graveyard, so it's never really the end of the world if stuff's in the graveyard or you're just adding stuff just to throw away. This deck really benefits from that. Moving on to Gobolg. Once per battle, if this card battles during the damage step, as a quick effect, you get to banish a wing beast monster from the graveyard. This card gains attack equal to that monster's original attack until the end of the turn. Super helpful, similar to Vaha Reina, to just really beat over big targets. A lot of the wing beasts we have in this deck will mean Gobolg is capping at around 3,500 to 3,800 attack, but there are a couple of 2,000 plus attack wing beast monsters Dragoonities use, so if you are able to get those into the graveyard, Gobolg can really turn himself into a 4k attack. Just beat down focus monster. Finally, closing out our extra deck with Dragoonity Knight Lewin. If it's special summon, so you don't even have to synchro summon it, you get to target a Dragoonity monster in the graveyard and equip it to Luin. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you get to target a Dragoonity monster you control, equip this card to it, it gains a thousand attack and defense. So essentially this is just to help boost up a lot of your OTK strategies, help Ascalon and Aradbar become 4k attack monsters, help Vaharania get stupidly high attacks, and just help stuff like Gobble really secure a lot of OTK strategies without having to worry too much about banishing from the graveyard. 
That one's a bit more optional as you might want to consider running more stuff that just helps re-equip and extend your plays or fill the graveyard, but it doesn't help to have a little bit more of a beat down focus strategy. Moving on to our main deck, we're going to kind of go into little sections. So we'll start with the Dragon Tuners with three copies of Kaos, two copies of Remus, and two copies of Phalanx. We'll start with Phalanx as it's the pretty easiest one and probably one of the older ones. Once per turn, if it's an equipped to a monster, you get to special summon it. Super easy, super helpful. It's also a soft once per turn, so if you have enough Phalanxes on the field, you can really just start special summoning from the spell and trap zone. Plus, they're a nice level 2 tuner, so you can go in a lot of Link and Synchro plays from there. Remus and Kaos both have the restriction where you can't use them as Synchro material unless it's for the Synchro Summon of a Dragoonity monster. Remus is cool in that you can discard it to also add Dragon Ravine from deck to hand. And if you control a Dragoonity monster, you get to special summon this card from your graveyard, but banish it when it leaves the field. There's a lot of really nice combos where you can just pitch Ravine, or pitch Remus, excuse me, grab Ravine. There's a Dragoonity Wing Beast monster that special summons when you have Ravine. And then you can immediately grab back Remus and go into something like Baharania from there. So it's super helpful to sort of link climb or synchro climb from there. But just keep in mind that whenever it special summons from the graveyard by its effect, it will banish when it leaves the field. So make sure you have some other dragon tuner in there for something like Vaha Rainia to retrieve. Or if you just want to go into Romulus and start grabbing other spell and traps, you can do that. And finally, we round out with my favorite tuner, Kaos. Similar to the restrictions that Remus has, you can only use it for a synchro summon of a Dragoonity. It's like Phalanx, but it doesn't have any once per turn restrictions on special summoning from the spell and trap zone. And to top it all off, on top of that, when using for a synchro summon, you can treat Kaos as level 2 or level 4. So you can really just climb up your extra deck and really get into some bigger playmakers or just, you know, change its level at will if you need to get into specific cards for furthering your plays. Super nice card, like I said. Unlike Phalanx, its special summoning condition is not once per turn. So as long as you can keep re-equipping it, you can keep re-special summoning it. Linking away, synchro summoning, just continuing your plays at will. Up next, we have the... They're dragon types, but they're not tuners. So they're kind of in the middle ground for Dragoonies. We have two copies of Arma Mistiltane and Arma Graham. We'll start with Arma Mistiltane. You get to special summon it from your hand by sending a face of Dragoonity monster control to the graveyard. And when it's normal or special summon from the hand, you get to target a dragon type Dragoonity monster in the graveyard and equip it to Mistiltane. What's really nice is you can just normal summon Kaos, send it to the graveyard for Arma Mistiltane, grab it back, equip Kaos, special summon Kaos, treat as a level 4 to tune it with Arma Mistiltane, and then boom, you can go into something like Arid Bar or Ascalon. Immediate nice little level 10 synchro right there. So super helpful with going into some bigger plays or just shortcutting. Armagram is kind of just its own main deck boss monster. You can banish two dragon and or wing beast monsters from the graveyard to special summon it from hand or graveyard. Target a face up monster, its effects are permanently negated. Also it loses a thousand attack for each equip card you currently control. When your opponent's monster is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, even if Armagram wasn't destroying it, you can just equip that destroyed monster to Armagram just to kind of help with that attack reduction effect. Each effect of Armagram is a hard once per turn. So yeah, really just easy summoning condition. Comes from the graveyard, doesn't banish when it leaves the field. Pretty much the only banishing is from its summoning condition. Target and negate something permanently once per turn. And then also lower its attack if you have enough equip cards. Plus it's 2900 attack, so... He can beat over cards on his own, no problem. Moving on to the third section of our deck, we have the non-tuner Dragoonity Wing Beast monsters. There aren't any Wing Beast tuners, so don't worry. We don't have to go into any more layers of Dragon Dragoonity nonsense. So we're just going to round out the rest of the Legion lineup with three copies of Dukes, three copies of Legatus, and three copies of Sonatas. We'll start with Dukes as, similar to Phalanx, it's a very simple effect and super handy. As a passive effect, it gains 200 attack for each Dragoonity card you control, that's Monster and Spell and Trap, super handy. And when it's normal summon, you get to target a level 3 or lower Dragoonity Dragon Monster in your graveyard, equip it to Dukes. So it's a nice way to recover a lot of your tuners that can special summon themselves, 
and like always, we'll go into big plays from there. Moving on to Sonatas. You can discard one Dragoonity card, Spell and Trap, Monster, anything as long as it's Dragoonity. Equip a Dragon Dragoonity Tuner Monster from deck to Sonatas. You're locked into Dragons for the rest of this turn. Once per turn, if a Dragoonity monster you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can destroy one Dragoonity card equipped to this card instead. So it gives a nice little passive protection effect to all of your Dragoonities. As long as you're afford to able to afford destroying those equipped cards. But mostly you'll just be grabbing stuff like Cow straight from the deck and then going into a level 6 or a level 8 Synchro from there. Legatus. Super cool. If you control Dragon Ravine or a Dragoonity monster, special summon it from the hand. If a Dragoonity monster is in your spell and trap zone, target a spell and trap on the field and destroy it. Ah yes, just destroy back row while also promoting more from your side. It's super handy. Plus, it also special summons when you have Dragon Ravine. So again, you can go a little bit more of outside archetypal engines or just splash Dragoonities into another Wind, Wing Beast, or Dragon-focused deck. As long as you have Dragon's Ravine, you're able to get Legatus onto the field, no problem. Speaking of Dragon's Ravine, it's time to move to the Spell and Trap and cover the fantastic field spell itself. It's a soft once per turn as well, so it just really fuels to how incredible this card is. Once per turn, discard a card, then activate one of these effects, add a level 4 or lower Dragoonity monster from deck to hand, or send a dragon from deck to graveyard. So if you have multiple in your hand and you're able to afford the discard cost, you can just pretty much just keep activating field spells on top of each other, discarding, sending dragons to the graveyard, stuff like Armagram so you can special summon, or just grab more Dragoonities that are from level 4 lower from your deck to your hand. So you can just immediately grab Legatus, special summon Legatus, and then go from there. Moving on to their equip, because... Much like Vylons, it wouldn't be an equip-based deck without at least one equip spell. Vylons have like three or four. We only have one on the dragon side, but it's fine. We're not too angry. This one kind of functions similar to Sonatus. You can only equip it to a Dragoonity monster. It gains attack equal to its level times 100. So equip it to the level 10 and you give them pretty much a thousand more attack. The equipped monster becomes unaffected by trap effects, and during the main phase, you get to equip a Dragon-type Dragoonity Tuner monster from deck to the monster equipped with this card. You can only use this effect once per turn. So yeah, it's pretty similar to Sonata's, just in equip form. Gives a little bit of protection, grabs your tuners from deck, and helps you forward your plays from there. Plus, it gives a little bit of a nice attack boost, so you can really hammer into your opponent's monsters or just get that OTK. Up next, we have two copies of Dragoonity Glow. Add a level 5 or higher Dragoonity monster from deck or graveyard to your hand. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target a monster in your monster card in your spell and trap zone equipped to a Dragoonity monster. Special summon it in defense position. You can use both effects in the same turn, but each effect is a hard once per turn. So it's a nice way to recover dragons from, hand, from deck or graveyard. Something like Armagram, you probably want to leave in the graveyard just because it can summon from there, but... If you have stuff like Armamus Stiltane or one of their level 5 or higher Wing Beast monsters, you can grab those back or just grab it from deck. But also what's cool is you can just special summon stuff from the Spell and Trap Zone. So it encourages you to run some of the other tuners that don't have special summoning conditions. Stuff like Goosey Arme, Akliz. Stuff that does have sort of their own secondary effects, but you can just retrieve them from Spell and Trap Zone if they are equipped as well. Or just any other card that's equipped as well. As long as it's something equipped to a Dragoonity, you can just grab it back from the Spell and Trap Zone. Up next, we got Dragoonity Whirlwind. If only your opponent controls a monster, special summon a Dragon Dragoonity Tuner monster from deck and a Wing Beast Dragoonity monster from deck as well. Negate their effects, and if your opponent controlled a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, immediately after this effect resolves, Synchro summon a Dragon Synchro monster using only those Dragoonity monsters you control. The rest of this turn after this card resolves, you're also locked into dragons. Which is nice is it just lets you go into any dragon synchro, so stuff like Stardust Dragon, or any of the other sort of higher level high wind dragon, or just any dragon synchro. It allows that, but pretty much for Dragoonity decks, it's a nice way to just grab into any sort of extra deck monster we need, and then further our plays from there. It does have a bit of restrictions, as we are 
only going into a Dragoon D tuner and a Wing Beast Dragoon D monster. So we aren't able to just shove like Armin Mistoltane and Kaos and go into the level 10s. We also wouldn't be able to do that as the effects were negated. So just kind of plan ahead when you're activating Whirlwind, what you want to go into and what you're grabbing. Up next, we have two copies of Draft. When this card is activated, target a level four or lower Dragoonity monster in the graveyard, add it back to your hand. So kind of like Glow, it's just a nice way to recover graveyard resources. Also, what's cool is if a Dragoonity monster whose original level is five or higher attacks is unaffected by your opponent's card effects until the end of the damage step. So it's a nice little form of recovery and protection for some of your big monsters. So you can secure, secure excuse me, those attacks without really having to worry about your opponent's card effects going off that might interrupt you. Moving on to some of the generic spells, we have three copies of Triple Tactics Talent. There's a lot of stuff going from deck to hand, deck to graveyard, grave hand to graveyard. Resources are just moving around at will and pretty fast pace, so your opponent's definitely going to affect Valor, a Sonatus, or Ash Blossom, a Glow, to prevent something from going from deck to hand. So be prepared to have something like Triple Tactics Talent. When your opponent activates a monster effect during your main phase, you get to activate one of these effects, draw two cards, take control of one monster they control until the end of the turn. This one doesn't target, so you can snatch something like Dragoon, and then look at your opponent's hand, choose a card from it, and shuffle it back into the deck. So it's a nice way to punish your opponent. You're probably going to go for the draw two, just so you can continue using stuff like Dragon's Ravine and Sonatus. Just unload more of your hand to get a lot of effects off, but also filling up that graveyard. Or to just get more hand presence for the following turn. But it's also nice to kind of steal some of their cards in the off chance that you could steal like a Boral Link, like Boral Load Savage, or just, yeah, like a Boral Load Savage, and then immediately use it for like Romulus. Super cheeky and cheerful for sure. Up next, we have two copies of Lightning Storm. Control no face up cards, activate one of these effects, destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls, or destroy all spell and traps they control. Just a nice way to get some field clearing going on. I know I usually do like one Red Jackie, one Harpy's Feather Duster, so I figured I'd change it up this time and do a little bit of a Lightning Storm. And then finally for our spells, we have one copy of Summon Storm. Pay 800 life points to special summon a level six or lower wind monster from hand. And then during a different main phase, not the one it was sent to the graveyard, banish Summon Storm to special summon a level four or lower wind monster from hand. It's just a nice way to get more field presence, get some of those bigger monsters out. What's cool is this could also trigger Armin Mistoltane's effect as his effect goes off when he's special summoned from the hand. So Summon Storm will let you just open up with him, get some stuff back from the graveyard, or just special summon a Sonatus so you can save your normal summon for something like Dukes. And then finally, we have the Counter Trap, Dragoonity Obluate. Again, like Faha Rainier or Gorma Fabar. Gorm Fauber. Yeah, that's pretty close. A lot of, again, it's more names I'm butchering. I apologize for any Legionnaires or Dragoonities out there. We'll get it right one day. This kind of covers just sort of the other effects that Arid Bar doesn't negate. It's kind of like his little partner in crime. When your opponent activates a spell or trap while you control a Dragoonity Synchro monster, negate the activation, and much like Arid Bar, you would banish that card. Then if you control a level 10 Dragoonity monster, you can have a Dragoonity monster you control. Gain 100 attack for each face-up banished card. Obviously, the graveyard effect, or the, uh, excuse me, the 100 attack for each banished card, probably not coming in handy, but it just covers along with Ard Bar's tracks of, you can pretty much negate a lot of stuff, spell and trap, monster as well, and then just banish your opponent's resources. That's the main focus, is just banishing it, so it's just harder for them to recover. Doesn't really matter on the attack game, like even stuff like Divine Lance. 100 attack may not mean much on like something like Legatus or even the level 6 synchros. But if you do use that equip spell with Baharania, you're able to recover and sort of recycle a lot of your Dragoonity tuners that you can just immediately send to double Baharania's effect, or attack, excuse me. Which would then become 5,000 as you would get 600 from the Lance. Add on to the 1900 of Vaharania, send the Dragoonity Tuner to the graveyard, not the Lance. So then you'd be unaffected by trap effects, and then you'd also just be able to be a 5000 attack beatdown card. So it's a lot of just battle focus and also banish focus while getting you some powerful synchros onto the field. 
that'll do it for today's deck profile. I'll probably ramble on a little bit more, but I'll spare you all from all the combos and Dragoon D shenanigans for another time. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.